plan now is to put a pipe, a, a water pipe that goes along this all the way down to the um, pump that is in the shallow well so that the cotejo, which happens to be up there, have water so that people can shower there. So here we have some more pipe. It is dying there at this point. We have more that we can connect. And it comes all the way from down there where the pump is in the well. So here it continues all the way there where the solar panels are and that is where we will connect it to the idea is to also put a cable there and then we can use the pump at night based on the bigger batteries of our solar system the batteries are not very big but that at least should give us a little bit maybe an hour in the morning so that people can shower and have water pressure. We have another pump inside of the temporary house, but that's for the house and inside of it. So we can't use this in the cortijo. Good morning. As you can see, it is sunny. We had a lot of rain, as you could see in the last video. And we have again a full house. There are two masons finishing the bathroom, at least the most important parts. And we have an electrician here to also do some installation. And I'm going to show you another detail here, right in front of me now. So here, Angel just dug a little trench so that we can put in the water line and the sewer. So that now our bathroom begins to be functional. Of course, a lot of things are still missing on the inside. I show you a little bit later. But I think we get this done by the time you guys arrive. So in there we have the room full, three people working. And once they are done, I can show you the result. And over here we have an electrical panel. That's new. So this will then distribute the electricity inside the cortijo and also do some IT stuff. And later, here in this place, we will have our batteries and the solar inverter and stuff like this once this has been cleaned up. And this will get an exhaust fan just in case. So this is taking shape. As you can see, it is pure madness at the moment, but that's pretty normal. Yes, that we have a visitor, someone from Germany showed up here, kind of unannounced. <laughs> he was seven kilometers away when he let me know that he is close by. And I'm going to say hello and give him a quick tour. So that's entirely possible. You can show up here. Just give me a little heads up and then we can meet to talk and I can show you around depending on what my situation is. But 
You are most welcome. That's no problem. Every single piece that is hanging here from the ceiling is accounted for individually. Nothing can escape. Each leg has a label with an identification number. Now Angel is taking one out to have a closer look. And here it is. You can see how yellow the fat is and you can also notice how it has shrunk. Now the weight is significantly less than when it was fresh. When you start cutting the hem, it is important to keep this fat in order to close the cut surface again, so that it won't dry out. To get your own leg of hem, you can head over to our web shop and order some. There are two options for you to buy the hem. We offer envelopes with 100 gram of hand sliced pieces of hem. And there is the full leg, in the case of a front leg, it's about 4 to 6 kilo each. Families in Spain keep the leg in the kitchen and everybody cuts off a slice whenever they are hungry. We had to make a little trip to Cordoba, bigger town. It's the provincial capital and there we have found the PVC pipes and the fittings that we need to install the wobblers. That's something that you can't find here in the village because there's no demand for it. And now we can do that experiment so that we can have the irrigation for the Miyawaki forest ready. And I'm now about to check on the masons, how things look like they are inside of the cortejo. Mama, if you want to arrugar, no pasa nada. No go, así va a cortar los oros, chico. Mételo ya ese. So here we have plan B. Those are some spades. Now we have six of them. That should do. They have all kinds of plantings. Good morning. It is now Thursday. And on Monday, some of you guys will arrive to help us plant that many trees. There 
has been a lot of things going on in the background. And also Live Terror has been communicating with me about the delivery of the different things. It appears that the trees will arrive on Monday. The transportation company had a truck breakdown and they had to do something. So instead of tomorrow, they will arrive on Monday, which is okay. And uh, there is another shipment on its way. This is some soil addendum or soil amendment. And on Tuesday, which is April 9th, the guys from Live Terror and also a television crew will arrive and uh, then the proceedings can begin. We will see how this is going to be. Here we have the still open trench for the wastewater pipe. It is partially installed and also the inlet, so to say. So there we will put the pipe in that provides the clean water. We will finish this, Angel and I, today and tomorrow. And maybe the Saturday we put in also. And then this should be ready. The masons have finished their work and you will see this soon. One volunteer has already arrived. You see the van there. He is completely independent. You can see the Starlink antenna on top of it. So this seasonal creek here continues to drain. That's the water that comes from the neighbor over there and goes into the big sediment trap that we made there. And it continues here over the fort and then goes down here and you can see it running there and it then continues into the pond that is full and obviously overflowing and we don't have any place <laughs> else where we can store it so that's basically a loss but it comes from the neighbor so it should have been stored there but we hope someday we can have some more trees here that will then take advantage of it so this is the pause for the bocadillo the little breakfast or the second breakfast and let's see what uh, the guys have achieved so far from afar it looks pretty nice so let's explore this So it has dried up, definitely. As I walk here in the sun since yesterday, definitely dried this. At least in the surface, not for heavy vehicles, but we want to get in with the BCS tractor and plow our little channels for planting. And I think that's definitely possible. So we are back on track. Today is Thursday and uh, on Friday we wanted to do this. So looks good they will hopefully finish all of that and then we can try the BCS tomorrow and then it's about installing the irrigation system at least partially and while we plant we can install some more pipes the thing is the pipes should be there before we plant because later because of the dense planting you can't really walk between the little trees you can but it's a bit difficult Sometimes it's the little things that make your life easier and one of those is this heavy-duty shelf that we are trying to build. Let me show you from the other side. So this is how it's going to look like. It has three shelves and it's definitely heavy-duty and a lot cheaper than a similar heavy-duty one made out of metal so that's a good choice i think so more or less we have a shelf this gets cut 
here in place in a moment, but uh, I don't have the chalk line. That's something for tomorrow, but shouldn't be a problem. And here we have more of the plywood. And then we have a big shelf. It is definitely sturdy enough. Oh, well, I see that I forgot to screw this back on. Let me do this quickly. Well, that's a problem. Somebody is trying to build a nest in a place where they should not do that. So we need to fix this. Another distraction. And they are actually all over the place. So even here, they are trying to build several. All that stuff, of course, is an invitation. This need to be fixed. And of course, with all that moisture, they have it quite easy. There isn't that much opportunity to build something, at least on this side, but on the other side, there definitely is. It's a whole swarm trying to find a new home, apparently. So, yeah, big problem. <laughs> 